Welcome back to the channel, everyone. This 1962 Corvette, this die-cast Corvette from Hot Wheels, I gave it a murder candy paint job in my last couple of videos. And I'm not happy with how it turned out. I need to get back to model railroading. That's what this channel is about. That's my passion. I kind of got on a tangent painting die-cast cars, but I need to redeem myself. And to redeem myself, we're going to paint one more die-cast car, for now anyways. And that one's going to be this. Well, 1932 Ford Coupe. This is a matchbox. This is not a Hot Wheels, so maybe I'll have better luck. Anyhow, we're going to give this a much simpler paint job. It's still going to be candy. We're going to go old school, make it look like an old hot rod paint job. We are going to change out the wheels and tires on this. But this time, I'm not going to do custom axle tubes. At least I hope I can get away without having to do custom axle tubes. We're going to do this one much simpler, and it's going to look amazing. If it does not look amazing, you'll never see this video. I'll never paint another tight cast car as long as I live. But anyways, guys, let's get to it. Let's go down to my workshop, and let's give this an awesome paint job. All right, well, while the body is having its spa day, let's work on this chassis. These are the wheels and tires that I plan on using on our little 32 Ford here. But this time, unlike our last Hot Wheel build, I'm not going to build custom axle tubes. That is, well, a bit of a pain in the butt. So we're going to do something a little bit simpler that will hopefully work out. I have never tried this before. So let's give what I plan on doing a try. My plan is to try to save these little attachment points for these original axles and make it so that our solid axle, because once we put the wheels on here, this becomes one solid piece, not independent like these. And the first thing we need to do is cut these old wheels off. First thing we're going to do, let's test the axle and see how much clearance we have already. Oh boy, I, are we going to get lucky? Well, that side's nice and loose. This side is not. Let's try the fronts here. Okay. Okay, so this one's perfectly fine. I am not going to mess with that one. This one here and the center one, we need to open up just a little bit. And to do that, I'm going to use my trusty pin vise. And I'm going to come in here as straight as I can. And this is very difficult to do behind a camera, actually. And just do it like that. I think you can see some of the plastic coming off. Okay, let's see if that was enough. If I have to go up in the size. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Okay, I'm excited. Let's see if this is going to work. I mean, this side was nice and free. Oh, look at that. And no axle tubes. Oh, so awesome. And there are our new wheels and tires and axles installed, and oh, they're in there, and here's the best part. Drive by. It rolls so much better than the axle tubes did. All right, here is our chassis. I put it on one of these little alligator clips with a, well, a skewer on the bottom to hold it and to put it into my little foam block to dry when we're done with it. And what I'm going to be using to chrome this chassis is our liquid chrome paint pen. This is a paint, so as you can hear, there is a rattle ball in there. Make sure you shake it up. This stuff is self-leveling. You get to put it on just a little thicker than what you would think to get it to self-level, but once you do, it looks like real chrome, or at least real plastic chrome. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this pen, and I'm going to hit all of the big spots with the pen. Then I will probably come back, put some of the liquid chrome in my little palette here, and get a nice little paintbrush to get any small areas that I want to reach without getting it all over the place. I don't want to do the bottom of it. Basically, we're going to do the bumpers, 
we're gonna probably put you in the frame, huh? We're gonna do the bumpers. We're gonna do the sides here. Anything to do with like you know the linkage or the suspension parts. That's what we want to chrome. Chrome out the backs here. It look like maybe you know like chrome uh, backing plates for discs or something. Brooke, I'll make it look cool. So let's get started. Just go and dab some in here, get a nice bit in here. Okay, I do believe we are done. Let's set this aside and let it dry. All right, well, we have the body out of its little bath there. Cleaned it up and I took the wire wheel to it in order to get some of the paint out of some of these little crevices. There are some flashing on here that I need to remove and I don't want a rag top. So it's going to be file time here real quick. I'm not going to go through this whole process. You know how it works. You get rid of all the nasty marks and you come back through with some fine grit sandpapers and smooth it all out, make it look good before we paint. It's all about the prep, folks. So I'm going to get to it. I'm going to get rid of some of these mold or casting marks and see if we can get rid of this rag top and make this a smooth top. Now here is our little 32 Ford. As you can see, I sanded off that little rag top that was on top. I think this looks much cleaner. I like that quite a bit. And again, that grill is just, it's just awesome actually. So first thing we're going to do before we paint is I'm going to mask off this grill because I don't want to paint that grill. I want to leave it just the way it is. Here's the grill all masked off and the body is now ready for paint and as a matter of fact I masked off some of the interior because a portion of the interior is the headlights which I need to paint the body color and as far as paint goes here's what we will be using today we are going to be using nothing but Createx products today and we will be using only two colors we will be starting with the Auto Born Sealer this is their Sealer Silver I like this because this has a small metal flake in it, which is very important because we will be going over that with a candy paint. And this is their Grabber Orange. Now it says orange, but from the samples, it has more of a red tint to it. I have not used this yet. I'm very excited. Now, as always with our Createx products, we have to use other items to thin these and to use them as carriers, etc., etc. So we will be thinning everything today with Createx 4011 reducer and for the candy we will be using the Createx 4030 balancing clear to mix with the candy because again the candy is just a pigment it is not a paint so we have to have something for the candy to mix with to adhere to our subject which is this car body and our final step will be to cover everything with the Createx 4053 high gloss which I will be cutting with the 4011 reducer and I'll probably be cutting the Audubon sealer with the 411 reducer as well. So with all that being said, uh, let's load up the airbrush and let's start painting. I'm going to show you my thinning process for this um, sealer. I'm not going to give you exact ratios only because everybody's using a different airbrush and for the one I'm using today is a 0.4 millimeter uh, nozzle tip set. Some people are using 0.35, some people are using 0.5, some people are using 0.8, what have you but you need to have it thin to your airbrush. Now here is the um, sealer just by itself and you can see how it just kind of gloops off of this stir stick. Way too thick for a 0.35 or 0.4 airbrush. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just start putting in reducer and mixing it until I get a nice flow off my stir stick. I'm not even counting. Just going to eyeball it and guess. I don't want to over reduce it, I'd rather be just a little bit on the thicker side because I can always increase my air pressure just a little bit. Like with all Createx products, once you have your thinners mixed in or your balancing clears mixed in, you need to let them set for about 15 minutes to, for everything to congeal and come together before you use it. So I'll see you in 15 minutes or a um, multisecond for you guys. Let's talk real quick about what I'm using today for my equipment. This is, I'll need to move this over here real quick. 
a new airbrush kit from Ovaka. Now this is not a review. I will actually be reviewing this kit in the next video, but I wanted to test it out painting this uh, Matchbox car today. But this is their new airbrush kit. This is their silent air compressor that has seven pressure settings from 25 PSI, PSI all the way up to 55 PSI. And this is their airbrush that comes with this kit. Again, not a review today, just want to show you what I was using. Reviews coming later. Okay, with that being said, let's get this airbrush loaded with the paint and start painting. And for every painting video that I do, I always preach this and I will do it forever. You need to make sure that you strain or filter your paints. Now, these are good paints. There should not be any big pieces in them. But what we're straining for, if again, if you have not seen any of my other videos, is once you open one of these paints up, they get crusties around the lids. And one of those crusties could fall into your mixture when you're thinning it. And you do not want that to get into your airbrush. Okay, again, this is 25 PSI. Let's just take a look here. Yeah, looks like it's coming out just fine. Don't know how well this is going to look being thinned. Like I thinned it, maybe too much. Do a light tack coat on that. Let's grab the body and hope I didn't over thin it, didn't mess it up. Always start with a nice light tack coat. Now what I'm doing here is I'm using the airbrush itself to help dry it a little bit. And as you'll notice, I never ever start paint on my subject. I always start off. That way in case there's any buildup on the tip, I don't spit it out onto my car. Plus I can also see what kind of a stream I'm getting coming out of the airbrush itself. Another thing you notice, I try to keep the air pressure constantly on. I don't want to turn it off, unless I need to, of course. But that also helps keep with uh, keeping the nozzle clear of any chunks that may build up from the airbrushing process. Looking pretty good so far. Let's take one more closer look at our primer coat, or our sealer coat, if you will. Nice little bit of flake in there. It's not super heavy flake. I think it's going to be perfect. Came out pretty nice. Okay, so the next step is going to put some color on here. And again, I'm using Createx Candy 2.0. This is their Grabber Orange. This we will be mixing one to one with our 4030 balancing clear. And again, we'll be thinning it with 4011 reducer, the consistency that I need for my particular airbrush. Alrighty, now here is our candy all mixed up. It's been sitting oh, almost 20 minutes, and as you can see, it just drips off that stick. Super nice and easy. Let me get to see here a little better. And here we go. Again, we're going to test it first. I have it set at 25 psi, which is the lowest this goes. Oh, look at that. It's a nice, even coverage. Okay, let's start with our body, or our interior, actually. And just like before, we start with a light, light dusting, a tack coat if you will. It's good enough for now, set that up here. That should stay without falling. And now onto the main event. Here we go. Now with your candies, you control your depth of um, see-through if you will by how many coats you put on. And when you're putting on the candies, you want to make sure you get your coats as even as possible. Because it will definitely show if you do not get nice even coats. Now that all of our paint has dried on our car body, and on the interior part that I painted. Before we do any clear coating, we're going to go in and um, do some detail work. And for that, I'm going to be using another 
a liquid chrome pen. This one is their fine tip pen. And I want to first just color in the ends of these headlights. But next is the body. I'm going to do the, oh, I bumped the camera there, sorry about that. I'm going to do the, the door handles, the trunk handle, and that might be just about it. Maybe try to touch the handles here on the uh, side of the hood opening. Again, I'm going to do this off camera because I got my magnifying spec tools on and I want to be able to see real close to that. I don't want to mess it up. And here is our car with, hopefully you can see it, maybe I bring it over here to the light, with a chrome on the door handles and the hood latches and the trunk. I'm not going to show you that side because, yes, well, I'll show it to you. I got a little heavy handed down here and I got a little much, a little extra, I got it on the body. It is what it is, right? It's better just to leave it than to try to clean it because if you clean it, You'll be repainting, trust me, I've, I've done that before. But, I'm still very happy with it. So here is the experiment. This is Tamiya's Paneline Accent Color. Now believe it or not, I have never used this stuff before. I uh, bought it because I watched a lot of videos, a lot of modelers using it, and it was really cool how it made the models look. But everybody that I watched put this on after the model was finished, after it was cleared. And it got me to thinking, well, they're putting it on actual model models, you know, plastic, 124 scale, 118 scale, whatever, plastic models that once they're finished, dig on a shelf and you don't handle them again. But I'm going to be putting it on this, a 164 scale matchbox, die cast matchbox car. And I'm going to be handling this car. I want to show it to my friends. Heck, I might want to push it around a little bit. So my thoughts are maybe I should put this on first because again, I've never used it. I don't know how well it's going to adhere to a metal surface, even if it's painted. Then I put my clear coat over top of it and hoping that it will protect this just that much more. So let's give it a try. Take some of it off and we're going to start. Yeah, this makes me nervous. Don't want to mess this up. Oh, that's pretty cool. Nice. I don't know how well you can see that. That there is going across the top. Well, here we are. Panel lined up. Do I like it? I am not too certain to be honest with you. Give me your opinion. Everything is almost dry, so our last step in this process is our gloss and I'm going to be using this uh, Createx UVLS 4053 this is their high gloss they say this is comparable to like a 2k finish not quite as durable but it comparable as far as the shine goes I have the clear loaded in the airbrush so that's ready to go but one very important step something that I didn't mention now when I was painting this car with just the regular paints I did not wear this my respirator Normally when I am painting, I wear a respirator all the time, but I wanted to talk while I was painting that. However, with the clear, I'm going to wear this. We're not going to talk. Clear, to me, I, I, it scares me a little bit, to be honest with you. It's a little more nasty than just your regular paints. So definitely wearing a respirator. With that being said, let's clear this thing and see what it looks like. Well, let's start with the easy one. I hope you can hear me okay. clears on and it's almost dry and I sure hope this camera can pick up the shine coming off of this car man this thing looks awesome I'm really happy how it turned out next let this dry a little bit more get it put together and we'll do the final reveal are you ready for it here it comes final reveal I sure hope I did this thing justice <laughs> 